you can go barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Salute Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? You know, um, I don't know. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I, I totally tried to think of something to say. I whiffed. It doesn't matter. We move forward. Kyle, we have sleep picks to do. How's yeah, the weather? Week 10. It's cold. Week 10. How's, How's the weather? weather? Cold. There you go, Sun Card. Sun Card's happy. Now, we talked about the weather. Hot as balls yeah, I think down it's cold. Here. I think it's cold everywhere other than Florida right now. <laughs> it's cold. Right. It's cold That's... in the Midwest. It's cold Kyle. here in the Carolinas. Kyle. It's cold Kyle. in Texas. That is but enough. not in Florida. There's no more weather. We already fed Sun Card. We don't want to overfeed Sun Card and set expectations we can't. <laughs> All right, week 10. Week 10 in our sleep picks here. We've got seven games. Oh, I'm sorry, six games. Seventh game, you can listen back in the previous episode where we talk about Ohio State and Rutgers. So let's kick it off here with the other six games. Noon game, Big 12 action, K-State, K Kansas State versus Texas. The Longhorns are a four and a half point victory in this game. Four and a half point victory. Four and a half point. Four and a half point uh, <laughs> favorite. Yeah. Kyle takes wow. a week off and he just. Yeah. <laughs> Four and a half point favorite by Texas here. What you got, Jared? Um, Kansas State's an interesting team. Um, Where are they? I think so, actually. Um, Kansas State, weirdly, has been uh, surprisingly consistent when it comes to playing against the spread uh, this year. I'm actually going to... I have wrote something down, and for whatever reason, um, I, I feel like it's... it's uh, I'm going I'm to double-check something real quick. I'm going to double-check something real quick. Um, Kansas State, impressively. When you look at their trends against the spread. Yes, I'm confirming that what I wrote is true. Every single game this year, Kansas State covers when they win. But they fail to cover when they lose. Which is interesting enough. As is. Mm -hmm. When they win, they cover when they lose, they don't. That's interesting all by itself this late into the season. What's additionally fun is that Kansas State has won every single game this year that they were favored to win and lost every single game when they were dogged. If they're favored, they win and cover 100% of the time. If they're dogged, they lose and don't cover 100% of the time. Yeah, Texas is favored. Give me Texas to win and cover. Dare I say, Jared, this. Dare I say that this is a game that everybody should keep a very, very close eye out here. Let's let's yeah. let's look at the, the one similar game that these two teams uh, share in common here, and that is against Houston. Have both last weekend been recent. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, Kansas State. Last weekend, Kansas State played Houston. At the same time, Texas played BYU. Texas played Houston that prior week, so in week eight. So yes, definitely recent. Okay. Last weekend, Kansas State beat Houston forty-one nothing. Okay. When Texas when Texas played Houston. 31 to 24. Okay. That's, that, that's, that, that is quite a bit of a difference there. How I take that. I, li I like what I've seen from Kansas state here. Uh, their two losses were against Missouri. Who's surprisingly good. Uh, maybe fake good. I, I still don't have a lot of faith in Missouri, but still a three point loss to, to Missouri. And they have a, one position loss, eight points by to Oklahoma State as well. So the losses were close. 
but their victories have been looking really good too. Like they're they're beating teams soundly that they should be as well, including this Houston one here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Wildcats, not just to cover, but for the upset here. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna knock off Texas from the playoff picture here this weekend. Okay, Kyle predicting an upset. Kyle, this week we have a bunch of guest pickers. We have a different guest awesome. picker for each game. Uh, for this game, we have Dinger. Who does Dinger pick? Uh, let's see here. He says here, uh, Malik Murphy filling in for Buckeye fan favorite Quinn Ewers will be the fourth backup quarterback the Wildcats have faced. Ooh, the Cats also bring that's a that's a hell of a stat. The Cats also bring the Big 12's top rushing attack into Austin to face the Longhorns and the Big 12's top rushing defense. Texas has won the last six. K State is due. He has Wildcats 34, Longhorns 27. This guy knows what he's talking about. Fascinating. Fascinating stuff. All right. All right. Let's, I, our guest let's, picker let's, uh, did not deliver for Missouri, Georgia. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we have one for all the others. So yep. we're not worried about that, but we are worried about uh, Kyle. Do you want to go first? This one? Sure. Missouri, Georgia here, 330 kickoff. Uh, Georgia is a 16 and a half point favorite. Hurry, hurry, hurry up and write it, Trey. Yeah, I'll kind of, I'll kind of try to extend it out, extend it out here. I mentioned just uh, recently, I don't really know Missouri here. So look at, looking at the schedule that Missouri, Missouri's played seven and one. They're 12th in the, in the first CFP poll here. Lone loss was to LSU. They beat Kansas state. Okay. They beat Kentucky. Okay. But I just, I don't know. Missouri's kind of just flying under the radar here. I really don't know how good Missouri is. But 16 and a half seems like a lot to me. It really does seem like a lot. Can, can Georgia cover that? Absolutely. I, th I think they can with the talent that they have. But can they put it together like they did against Kentucky and Florida? 16 and a half is too much is too much for my blood here. So I'm I'm going to pick I'll pick Missouri to cover here. I think Georgia wins easily, but 16 and a half seems like a lot. Mizzou is 5 for their last 6 against the spread. Ooh. Georgia has only covered twice all year. On the surface, this kind of feels like I'm about to say give me Mizzou. Mm -hmm. However, five, I said Mizzou's five of their last six against Georgia, or excuse me, against the spread, uh, five of the last six against the spread for Mizzou. The one game that the, the one in there is easily the best team they've played all year, LSU. Easily the best team they've played all year, LSU is the one game where they failed to cover. Georgia. Their only two covers are against the two best teams they've played this year. Mizzou comes across a bit like a paper tiger. Pun intended. We meanwhile, Georgia does in fact appear to maybe have that dog in them. So I like Georgia to win. I like Georgia to cover. Uh, give me Georgia. What does Zach say, Jared? He said, uh, Mizzou is an SEC East fraud. Georgia looks human, unless it's Florida. Uh, give me the Bulldogs 45 to 17. Georgia woke up with Florida. So he's he's picking Georgia to win and cover. How, how about how about what if Missouri? What if that's saying they're going to. But what if Missouri pulled up the upset here? What if? They, they sit in the driver's seat in the SEC East. They would. Their one tough game is against Tennessee left. Yeah. Man, how, how crazy would that be if Missouri comes up with the upset, wins their final three games here, and would play for the second time 
as an SEC member into the SEC championship game. That would be wild. Uh, and while we can have an argument about whether or not Georgia covers, I, I, I don't have a ton of hope that Mizzou actually wins this game. I agree. I agree. But, it, but it's um, fun to... It probably it's should fun be... To, it's fun to play pretend for a second. Um, should be noted that the game is in Athens. Yes. All right, let's move on to the next game, uh, also 3.30. Moving over to ACC, CCC country, uh, Virginia Tech and Louisville. Uh, I think, Jared, you talked about Virginia Tech being a an okay team um, in the previous episode here. I did. Uh, it, it is in Louisville. Louisville is a nine and a half point victory, which Favorite, sounds... Kyle, favorite. You did it again. <laughs> Nine and a half point favorites in this game. I don't know what's gotten into me. It seems like a lot. It really seems a lot, but I don't really, I don't really trust Virginia Tech here. And we've seen how good Louisville is, like a really sound team overall. They they shut out Duke last weekend. Uh, played very well against Notre Dame recently as well too. I I'll take my chances. I think I think I'll take Louisville, the Cardinals to to cover here. Uh Virginia Tech lost in week 4 against Marshall. Marshall. Weirdly enough though, after that, they appeared to have sort of flipped a switch uh and looked like a brand new team. Uh Louisville in the past two weeks had a very impressive win over Duke. They shut out Duke. But not just not just shut them out. Like it's it was it was dominating. It was a dominant win. I think shutting out counts as dominating, doesn't it? (laughs) Um, Statistically, too. Okay. The, The zero in the score column is a hell of a stat. Um but they crushed a real a, a pretty impressive Duke team. But the week previous to that, they lost to Pitt, who is miserable this year. The Panthers suck this year. So who the hell yeah, is Louisville? I yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Louisville in that game. <laughs> Virginia, Virginia Tech appears to be kind of like they're kind of the East Coast Arizona. Where they're kind of two separate seasons. So I'm going to believe, I don't know what to think about Louisville. I don't know which Louisville is going to show up. Is it going to be Louisville that beat Duke or is it going to be Louisville that lost to Pitt? But Virginia Tech, I feel like bad Virginia Tech played in September and we've had good Virginia Tech ever since. So with a nine and a half point favorite, uh, nine and a half point spread on the Louisville side, I'm going to take Virginia Tech. And I think they win. I think Virginia Tech wins this game. Jared drinking that hokey water there. Don't like the phrase hokey water. (laughs) I can't tell if that's water that's insanely dirty or is just another word for moonshine. It's the latter. I'm Uh, down. All right. Uh, For this one, Buckeye Esquire is our guest picker. So... All right. Uh, he has a long one here, so I'll go through this quick. A weird, a weird turkey a versus lawyer. a cardinal. Wi- what? He's a lawyer. He, he okay. writes stuff <laughs> like this for a living. A weird turkey versus a cardinal with human teeth. Fun fact: Louisville is three and zero this year when playing on the CW. Sadly for them, this <laughs> one is. Sadly it for them, this statistics. one is, is on the ACC network. No matter the network, Louisville has been a surprisingly good team this year and is probably going to the ACC championship game. Or maybe they're in the same division as Florida State. No, there, there, there's no divisions this year. No, yeah. It's, the Coastal and the Atlantic are dead. Either way, they beat the shit out of Duke last week and can beat the Hokies by 10, laying the points, going with Louisville. This guy gets it. All right. Uh... The third, we have a third 3.30 game here because the 3.30s were stacked. So, we By the going... way, the, the entire weekend is stacked. 
I left Notre Dame Clemson, which is on at noon on the floor. Um, there, there were several good games, uh, like <laughs> last week, last week, are- I, I forced a, a for, I, I forced a game into the noon window because there just, there was only, only one good game in the noon window this week. I, I, I had options all over the place. This is a really good college football weekend. Whatever the spread is for that Notre Dame Clemson pick Notre Dame. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what it is. All right, Oklahoma, I'll, I'll Oklahoma, look. I'll look. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State is the next game here. The Sooners are a five and a half point favorite in this game. Uh, I think Oklahoma is going to bounce back here after after their loss last weekend. It, I, I, I just truly believe that Louisville or not Louisville, jeez, that Oklahoma is just a they're they're really good team here and i think they'll they'll bounce back here five and a half points it's pretty much a touchdown i'll i'll take i'll take the sooners to cover kyle side quest what do you think what do you think the spread is for notre dame clemson i just i i need you i'm a vamp for a second to give you a chance to think where's the game at where's the game at uh, I believe the game is in South Carolina. Okay, so so yes. add three points. So add three points there because I originally was going to say like nine and a half. So I'm going to say I'll give him some credit here. So I'll say like five and a half. You're you're close. I was shocked by the number. Um, three and a half. Oh yeah, take the over. Take the over. Take the over? Do you mean take the points or take take the points and the take... over? <laughs> God, Kyle, take Kyle, everything over. Kyle, take everything over. Your your word choices tonight are all over the map. I swear I didn't have any of that Halloween candy. We gave them all. We gave all of that away. So <laughs> yeah, it's the Halloween bourbon. I think you've been hitting. Yeah. Words are hard. All right, my turn for what do you Oklahoma. got, Jared? What do you got? Um Oklahoma. I think the first one of the first times we talked about Oklahoma this year in the slow picks. I got I got all excited because Oklahoma was a perfect six and zero against the spread. Then mm-hmm. for the last two weeks, I took Oklahoma because they were undefeated and then almost undefeated against the spread. They proceeded to lose both of those games just to spite me because it's all about me. Um, Oklahoma State uh, has once once again, kind of like Virginia Tech, kind of like Arizona. Tale of two teams here. Oklahoma State, uh, after struggling hard early in the season, uh, I forget I forget who, but they dropped it on an embarrassing game in September. Uh, Mm -hmm. It escapes me who exactly it was at the moment. Uh, But but since then, uh, Oklahoma State has found some new life. uh, And a lot of that has to do with running back Ollie Gordon, who, if you if you haven't seen Ollie Gordon play, is great. Um, So Oklahoma State has all the momentum right now. Um, So. Kyle, not only does Oklahoma State cover, Oklahoma State wins this game. Oklahoma's going to drop a second, uh, a second game. All right, you said Oklahoma covers, but then they lose a no, second. No, Oklahoma game. State. Did- no, uh, if I said that, I, I misspoke. Oklahoma State will cover. Okay. Not only will they cover, Oklahoma State will win. If I forgot to say state, I apologize. There's two Oklahomas. Oklahoma State has all the momentum. This, Oklahoma State Jared, has a great running back. Oklahoma State will win. Oklahoma State will cover. This is the same Oklahoma State team. I just just, just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. This is the two same teams. Oklahoma State team that I have lost called to teams. South Alabama. Yes. That's the embarrassing 30, loss they had. 3 to 7. Yes. Yes. Uh, Kyle. You have Arizona on the West Coast. You got Virginia Tech on the East Coast. And right in the middle, you got Oklahoma State. These are teams that started off the season 
terribly, but have found new life. Arizona has their quarterback. I don't know what the hell Virginia Tech's doing, uh, to be honest. Um, and Oklahoma State has Ollie Gordon. Ollie right. Gordon's amazing. All right, who's our guest picker for this one? Uh, we'll call him Odin. Odin. Uh, what does he, he says, have to say? Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. Had Oklahoma as a six-point favorite. Um, I think Oklahoma State covers, but lose by three. 31 to 28. Uh, players to watch for OU is Gabriel. Uh, he will be the reason they win. And Gordon uh, for Oklahoma State, he's such a great running back. See, he knows. Uh, over under is 62, so he'll go under. I, I I agree with everything he said, except I think Oklahoma State wins by three. That's my that's my only. It's my only addition. All right. All right, moving on to our evening games here, night games. Washington and USC uh, got a big matchup out in the out over in LA here. The Huskies are a three and a half point favorite in this game. Where do you, where do you see this one going, Jared? Um, Washington, USC. I love Washington this year. Um, I, th I think Washington, listen, Washington has, as we said on the uh, Collegiate Chaos episode, as we talked about during the end of Know Your Enemy, because we started talking about the playoffs for some reason. Washington has the best win of the year against Oregon. Per the CFP playoff committee. They have a chance to beat USC now. Who, at the very least, will be ranked when they played. This will be another great win for them. And they've basically been told by the playoff committee, hey, winning's not good enough. You're going to have to start winning bigger. So I think that they're going to make an example of USC this week. And I think Washington's going to announce that, yes, we deserve to be in the playoff. And I think they're going to make it an example of what they can do at USC's expense. Mm -hmm. Give me Washington to win and win big. Those three and a half points mean nothing to me. And yeah, these past three games have been in terms of uh, completion. Has not been the greatest for for Penix? Uh, he's he's thrown it for under 65 percent for the last three games here uh, and also thrown for four interceptions as well. Very uncharacteristic for Penix this year. Can he, can he get out of that in, in this game here? But yeah, it's, it's a, uh, I think <laughs> it's USC's defense. It's USC's defense. So he's, he's played some stiff competition, but I think he can, I think he can pull out of the slump that he's in. Um, and, and rise to the occasion and, and, and rise to the occasion against the legitimate opponent in, in mm -hmm. USC. I listen, yeah, yeah, of course. And by the way, what we know about what we know about USC is that their defense can provide no protection. Everyone yeah, scores just, on USC and it, it, I think that you, you, USC's nobody is find... safe. All right. U U Nobody USC USC has to be able to score score points here. I think I think Washington will score minimum 40 points in this game. And because of how <laughs> minimum really like bold underline italicize the word minimum. Yeah. Well, it may surprise you like Washington's only scored more than 40 once in the past okay, four now, games now, now, now let's look at USC's uh, points led up. Yeah, points led up. Uh, last weekend, 49. Yeah. 34, 48, mm -hmm. 
41, 41, 28. Yeah. Okay. So that they, they got they got to score more than 40 points in this game just to be in it. I just don't I just don't think that's gonna happen here with this Washington defense. Give me the give me the Huskies. Kyle. Austin's our guest picker for this one. You knew he was going to claim the USC game because Austin likes nothing more than to talk shit about USC. Who who, who does he have? Uh, let's see here. Probably going to be talking about some mid quarterback, I, I assume here. Uh, after being completely disrespected by the committee, Washington and their quarterback, huge panics guy, by the way, are going to come into this game with full force. They're going to thrust themselves back into the spotlight against a limp USC team. And, Ky- and Caleb Mid-Williams, I know I know it'll be a hard game, but I think Washington's O-line will keep Penix erect enough and he will s- score multiple times on the night. Washington covers easily. He has 48 to 35. Yeah, I... Normally, I'm not a night. That is not a nice score, by the way. It is not. Um, (laughs) Normally, and like I said, 40 points, 40 points. See, see, Austin, Austin's right on track there. Normally, USC is 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 good for a cover. The Trojans are good for a cover, but their defense providing no protection this year. All right. Next up. LSU Bama. Premier game of the weekend, Kyle? Question mark. Um, I would I would say I would say so. I know that Washington and USC is on ABC. This one's on CBS. Yeah, I, w- I would say I would say so because I. Yeah, I, w- I would I would definitely say so here. It's this is this is an odd one here. This is an odd one. Um, Bama is favored by three and a half here, but I've read that there's a lot of defensive starters that's going to be out for LSU does not bode well for for Brian Kelly to try to get a victory over over Nick Saban here but it's it's hard to pick against uh against Nick Saban here home and with a and with an LSU defense that's without multiple starters here that's hard for me to to not pick Bama. So I'm picking Bama. Kyle, I don't have any advanced analysis for you on this one. I don't know how many games either of these teams have played on the CW. Uh, I don't know how many, (laughs) I don't know how many backup quarterbacks these teams have faced this year. And I don't even know what these teams record against the spread is because I have a rule. And that rule is, if I have a chance to pick Nick Saban's Alabama for less than a touchdown, if I get to pick Nick Saban's Alabama and the spread is less than a touchdown, I will take it. Alabama minus six and a half. I don't care who they're playing. Uh, and so three and a half, that's three bonus points as far as I'm concerned. Give me Bama. Yep. Yeah, at home, at too, home yeah. too. So that so that tells me at a neutral site, this is a pick 'em then. I, I don't I don't agree I don't agree with that. But I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Our homie Sun Card is picking this one, Jared. All right. We, we we got to talk about some weather at the beginning of the show. We're gonna talk about Sun Card's pick here at the end of the show here. Uh Sun Card here. When you watch a rivalry game, the announcers like to say things like Throw the records out of the window and the stats don't matter, which both are BS. They are who they are. And I, and I like to look at the numbers. According to FanDuel, if you give Bama three and a half, you get a 260 return. And if you give LSU three and a half points, you get a 125 return. All that means is Vegas believes Bama is actually a better team and it is being played in Bama. Fortunately, as a viewer, when I watch the game, I root for LSU. So since all logic points at Bama winning at home, I would take LSU to win 31 to 28 and and Saban's last LSU home game. Hmm. I didn't expect that ending. 
Interesting pick. I like it. I like it. I don't agree, but I like it. All right, Kyle. That's our last game. Um, that is. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me look at let me look at some other interesting interesting games here that we decided not to. Uh, I, I left some here. good. I left some good games on the table this you, week. You mentioned you mentioned Notre Dame and Clemson at noon. If it's if it if Ohio State does start to does start to um, run away against Rutgers, uh, well, most likely you're probably going to be watching Kansas State and Texas. But Notre Dame and Clemson's there at noon. Uh, scrolling down here. No, don't forget about don't forget about Ole Miss Texas A and M too. There's like an entire week of good football games in the noon window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas A and M's. Yeah, they're 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 okay. They're okay. I know that they have three losses. They have three losses. Yeah, it's high chaos potential. Is is my only point. That's that's fair. That 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 is fair. But I I believe Ole Miss is playing pretty good. Well, now what am I kidding? Now, no, you're right, Jared. (laughs) High chaos potential. High chaos potential. Yeah, in the noon window alone, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State, Rutgers, Texas A&M versus Ole Miss, Kansas State, Texas. Um, And then in that weird two o'clock window. Which I still count the part of the uh, they can go either way. You have Arizona State, Utah, but it's on the Pac-12 network, so you can't watch that. Uh, And then Air Force is playing Army at two thirty like. It's a really good window of games. And yet, despite that, Kyle, when I reached for a third game, I went to the 330 window. So you did. Yeah, you did. I mentioned a lot of these teams on here. Is there anybody else interesting that's maybe worth watching at 330 if you're feeling spicy here? Yeah, Um, I, I think you have. So, yeah, I mean, you have our three games, which is Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. Um, you have uh, Mizzou and Georgia. Uh, and then you have Virginia Tech, Louisville, the three games we talked about. But on top of that, you have a heated, heated, historic rivalry with Maryland and Penn State. Oh, I thought you were going to go to another game. <laughs> you also have you also have Kansas and Iowa State. And, you know, Kansas is a ranked team. I, I think there's another technical chaos, although they already have two losses, so not really, but still. Um, and then we'll see how Michigan plays um, without signals. It's against Purdue, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens without their resident uh, code cracker on the sideline. Oh, I thought you were going to mention... Iowa and Northwestern. Can you guess the over under for that one? Iowa and Northwestern. <laughs> um, 33. Anybody else in the chat want to guess here? Over under total points for Iowa and Northwestern. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not never quite that, that low. low. Let, let's let's go and let's get in the middle there between what Jared and you guys said. Uh, 31. That's not in the middle. That's way closer to what I said. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, <laughs> you almost never in college football. You almost never see the over under dip below. Although I think it happened with an Iowa game once this year, but you almost never, ever see it dip below 30. That's a that's an 18 to 13 score. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. By the uh, way, all, all uh, this talk, the 730 window, uh the, the evening window, also not bad. Um Purdue, Michigan, as I stated, we'll get to see how Purdue does without their code cracker on the sideline. Um then you have USC Washington and LSU Alabama. Uh maybe not as deep as some of the other windows, but man, when they're the, the 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 two big games they got they got what 
What if I had you, you got you got a night you got a night you got a night game on the road in Raleigh here. Can NC State pull up another upset here against Is Miami? It, that's another see, that's another good game I left on the table. Uh that that game would have been good enough to pick last week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and, and great, another one here, another one, another one, coming up. Another one if you are, if you cannot get enough college football, you're, you're up late, you're up past midnight, another potential, another potential, this, this one here, Jared, I, I think I'm going to go with this pick as my, um, as my upset here, UCLA in Arizona, 1030 on Fox sports one. I think, I think that's, I think that's good, going to be. I think, I think that's this a good, be my pick. I think that's a good chaos pick call. Um, if I'm going to pick one to my chaos prediction, uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to Texas A and M over Ole Miss. Okay. That, I, think that, that, I think that, Arizona. That's, that's a lot of I think Arizona. There. I think Arizona is a is a good call too. Yeah, I mean that's all a point. That's a lot of points if you can get that one. The other one, my another one you you mentioned here, maybe maybe Iowa State can pull out the the victory over over Kansas. Yeah, that that just doesn't feel like much of a bold prediction if I'm being honest cuz Kansas is what 23rd yeah. or one. something. 21. 21. How dare you, Trey? How dare you, Zach? All right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, do you have, uh, everyone come to the gosh darn discord server. If you haven't done it yet, what the hell are you waiting on? We're going to watch, we're going to watch college football games. We're still voting on what time window we're going to watch this weekend. So I don't know which time zone or excuse me, which time window we're going to be watching. Uh, but it's very, uh, I mean, as far as the available games, I don't think we can go wrong. I think every window, I think every window looks great quite frankly. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? We finally, Jared, get to see two Buckeyes playing together that we hope to have seen back in 2018. We get to finally see them on the field at the same time. Yes, sir. Creating fear against quarterbacks here. Yes, sir. Chase Young heading over to 49ers to join Bosa. You got Bosa and Young going at going at it over at um over at San Francisco here. That's 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 quite of a duo there. And I know that Young has I know that Young's kind of been flaky recently since his injury here, but I like it. I like it. I do too. I do too. He'll, he'll he'll be back. He'll be back. He's not that old. He's not a running back. He'll be back. Mm-hmm. All right. That's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, tonight's ending music is a Columbus based band called girl Fox F O X. Cause apparently some people in the chat thought I may have said something else on uh, the end of the last episode. That is girl Fox F O X. Uh, they'll be ending today's episode. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Girl Fox.